It is time to bring in Arthur Schwartz, the food maven. Arthur, of course, joins us on a Monday morning. We talk about food, glorious food. And this morning, we begin in the alphabet with the letter A. Good morning, Arthur. <laughs> Arthur is beginning A. And we've got that, that and artichokes. And uh, Well, here's the deal. Yeah. Spring is here. And that is a song, and I would sing it because I'm happy spring is here, but you don't want to hear me sing. So uh, everything is, is, is coming up spring in my neighborhood. I know not quite in your neighborhood. We're always two weeks apart, actually. So in two weeks, you will see the crocus is blooming, my crab apple tree, the buds are filling out, and I, I couldn't believe my eyes this morning. There's a magnolia tree that I, I see from my kitchen window, and the buds are already white and pink. So that means maybe tomorrow we get magnolias. I mean, this is only, what, third week in March. Yeah. Anyway, uh, food-wise, of course you can tell when spring is here because the produce changes. Well, it used to. I have to say that all through this past winter, there have been asparagus in my stores uh, from Peru, from somewhere in South America, or maybe even Chile, I don't know. I think it's Peru mainly. I bought some Peruvian blueberries a couple of weeks ago. Boy, were those disappointing. Uh, but artichokes are uh, in season, or at least very beginning of the season now. Uh, until at least May, uh, you'll, I always say you can tell when the peak of the season is, is when the price gets the lowest. Right now in my overpriced supermarket, a large globe artichoke is $3.49. Uh, when they get down to under three, you could figure it's the, it's the season. And when it gets down to two, you can know it's high season. And if it's less than that, they're probably not fresh. Artichokes are not cheap. And the reason that they're so expensive in a restaurant, uh, where if you can even find a restaurant that serves a whole artichoke anymore, um, is because it requires intense preparation artichokes. It's, it's more about the preparation than about the product itself, although the product can be expensive. Now, in Italy, artichokes of various kinds come in and out of season, so that it's a much longer artichoke season, and as I cook Italian most of the time, uh, I have to say that I miss having uh, some of those Italian varieties because they require less preparation. For instance, there's a variety that does not have a choke, does not have that hairy, not pleasant to eat center um, buried under all those leaves. That said, those are not leaves. <laughs> An artichoke is a flower bud. It's a thistle. And when it blooms, it's a gorgeous flower, I have to say, because they're all purple and, 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 and green and pretty. And in fact, uh, on Cecilia's farm, uh, from her own farm, she has, by the way, Pestum, where we I used to have my cooking school, and Cecilia, of course, still has her agroturismo, um, is a big artichoke growing area. And so she has, they, they love that neighborhood. And artichoke plants, by the way, last several seasons. They continue to bloom. I don't know how many seasons, but the same plants stay in the ground several years before they, at least in, in my knowledge of artichoke uh, agriculture, uh, 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 they, they then uh, turn the plants under and plant something else for a while. Anyway, and, uh, since there's a field of artichokes on the farm, I've witnessed this. They, uh, they, they, if you miss picking the artichoke, it blooms, of course, as a flower, and they really are stunning flowers. And Cecilia likes to make uh, flower arrangements with the buds on the stems as well as the blooming flowers. By the way, I, so I got this thing that I do from an old friend who's long deceased now, George Lang, who was Hungarian, and a, uh, we always said the most charming man on earth. And when you went to his house for dinner, he had a little case full of silver bibelots, I guess you'd call them, little tchotchkes. 
and he would pull out some funny-looking silver tchotchke, and if you could guess what it was for, you got to keep it. Of course, he always picked something that nobody ever heard of before or had any idea what it was used for, so he never lost one that I know of. However, I, and I have never done, and I, what I do, I don't have a, a case full of silver tchotchkes, but what I do have is these, uh, um, I don't know how you call them, these cups, these terracotta cups that are put over artichokes so that they don't turn green. They stay purple. So if you've seen purple artichokes, and I have here in the States too, um, it's because they have been deprived of the sunlight to turn green. And these little cu- I have a bunch of these little cups that I got from a farm where they grow artichokes and purple artichokes, and nobody ever guesses what they're for. And now, if, if anybody listening is ever coming to my house, I'm not going to do it for you because I don't want to lose any of these. Anyway, back to artichokes themselves. So artichokes are a complicated vegetable. They have tough outer, we're going to call them leaves, even though they're petals. They have tough outer leaves that you really don't want to eat or even attempt to eat. They have a very meaty uh, core, which we call the artichoke heart. And they have stems, which taste exactly like the heart, truthfully, but can be fibrous. So it depends on the artichoke whether you want to use the stem or not. In the States here, I don't see artichokes on stems as often as I see artichokes uh, cut at the stem. Uh, one thing to look at, by the way, to, to, to determine uh, freshness, it's really hard, it's a sort of a mysterious uh, thing in artichoke, is if it does have a stem, uh, if, it's a ver- if it's long and it's flexible and it's flexible, it's probably not fresh. The, the, bo- the base of the stem will turn, be, turn black. I mean, that happens almost immediately. In fact, part of the preparation is to prevent the artichoke from oxidizing and turning black. So now, if you're doing a big artichoke, you have to peel off all those tough outside leaves, cut off at least about, I wouldn't say at least, about a third of the top. You you need a big, sharp knife for this. Although I, I recently watched a YouTube demonstration by Jacques Pepin. By the way, if you really want to learn anything about technique, uh, go to YouTube and find Jacques Pepin. He does almost everything you want. So he shows you how to, quote, turn an artichoke. And I loved his technique, but I'm not doing it. He's very French. I'm, I cook more Italian. But if you want to eat a whole big artichoke, the old-fashioned French way, you take off the outer leaves, you cut off the top. Uh, as you're doing this, I rub my artichokes with lemon and then put them in, a, in, in, in acidulated water, meaning a big bowl of water uh, with a lemon squeezed into it. So what I do is I squeeze in the lemon juice. Uh, who cares about the pits? It doesn't matter. And then I use the spent halves of lemon to rub on, because uh, there's still plenty of acid there, to rub on any cut surface of the artichoke. So as you're working the artichoke, rub it with lemon, and then when you're finished working the artichoke, put it in the acidulated water. Now, I learned this trick uh, halfway through my life from a kid who was um, doing what they call a stage, uh, meaning an apprenticeship. Uh, He was a culinary student. In, in, in a fancy French restaurant. And he said, oh, I learned from my chef uh, the hard way that artichokes need to stay cold to, to slow down the oxidation. So I used to have to sit in the walk-in refrigerator <laughs> while I was cleaning the artichokes uh, so that they would remain cold. And we put them into a bucket uh, with ice cubes. Uh, with and lemon juice, both. So I do that now, and I I, I open a tray of of ice into a bowl. I fill it with water. I squeeze in a lemon or two, it depends on how many artichokes I'm doing, and I rub 
as I go. So once you get down to the um, now, I, I, I thought this was interesting when I watched the Jacques Pepin uh, uh, um, uh, technique video. He he waits till the artichoke is cooked before he removes the choke. But I don't know who I learned this from. But I still before the artichoke uh, is cooked, I open up the leaves, and you find that cone that is purple, by the way. You, you pick off that cone of uh, undeveloped petals, and uh, underneath that is this hairy section, and you scrape the hairy part off with, I use a grapefruit spoon, you know, the serrated edged teaspoon, and it works very well. I don't do this too often. I'm not really fond of preparing artichokes. So more likely than not, I'm going to buy baby artichokes, which you don't have to do this to. By the way, in Italy, there are artichokes that have undeveloped, uh, I don't even know, I don't, botanically, I don't know the situation here. But you don't have to worry about a, 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 a hairy, you know, choke, is what it's called, a choke. Now, baby artichokes require a lot less preparation, although still, and I don't mind doing them because, um, I don't know, just it's a meditative thing for me with these little babies. And baby artichokes are not grown as baby artichokes. They are offshoots of the little side buds on the plant, little small, they would be little smaller flowers than the, the big artichoke at the top of the stem, which opens into this gorgeous flower, they would be little ones. So they are harvested later in the season. Probably won't see those for a few more weeks. Although, uh, you know, every, every, I hear everything everywhere is early this year. So it's possible you'll see them soon. And those don't require uh, you to open them up to, to cook them, although at the end I do. But you just cut off the, 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 the blackened end of the stem end, and you take off some outer leaves, the, the tough ones, and that's sort of it. Then you put them in the bowl, and of course you rub them with lemon as you go, and you put them in your bowl of uh, lemon water ice, and when you're ready to cook them, that's when you cut them in half. Because if you cut them in half right off, even with all the lemon and ice, they're still going to discolor a bit. And to keep them nice and green as long as you can, I would um, not cut them until the very end. By the way, I just saw this uh, also, a YouTube video. Who remembers who was doing it? But I thought it was interesting. Uh, this cook made a mixture of lemon, oil, and water um, and put the artichokes these were baby artichokes, right into the lemon oil water because she then cooked them in, the, in, the, in this lemony oil water uh, that she kept them fresh looking in. I thought that was clever, and I'm going to try it next time I get a baby artichokes. And I do make them what I would consider Sicilian style. Now, the Sicilian style, you end up with a rather intense, I think fabulously delicious artichoke, but it's the same seasoning that they use in Rome for artichokes Roman style, except that the Romans add more liquid, and so it's a more subtle, uh, nuanced, let's say, preparation. The baby artichoke Sicilian style, um, after I've prepped, let's say, a pound of baby artichokes, let's say is going to be 12 to 15 artichokes. <coughs> Excuse me. I cut them in half and put them in a skillet with the cut side down, flat side down. And into that skillet, I put, um, you know, it's for a pound of artichokes, about three tablespoons of your best olive oil. You can even use your condiment quality olive oil here. But I have, you know, both, both what we call condiment quality, meaning, you know, the kind you put on a salad or a drizzle on vegetables or on soup. And I have... Excellent, I must say, uh, everyday olive oil um, from Sicily, by the way. Anyway, about three tablespoons of olive oil. And I like garlic, so I use at least 
a couple of large cloves of garlic, finely minced. I scatter that over the top of the artichokes. Salt, you need a good amount of salt, or, or, you know, a scant teaspoon, I would even say. And mint. So uh, my mint, meaning the mint that I planted many years ago uh, 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 next to my apartment house, is coming up already. I, 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 I trust this mint. It has not had any chance for a dog to pee on it. <laughs> but so if I go to the back of the garden where yeah, they couldn't anyway, I'm just joking, folks. Um, maybe that wasn't so funny. <laughs> anyway, uh, there is mint in my garden already. It's one of the first things that comes up, and speaking of which, this was a conversation at a, I, I went to a wonderful dinner party the other day for uh, a cousin friend's birthday. And uh, somebody said something about fennel, and they did this table, very sophisticated people, except for the one Italian at the table, uh, didn't know that the fennel we eat as a bulb is different than the fennel that's grown for seeds and that you have the greens for. There's a, there's a, a restaurant in my neighborhood now uh, where the man makes Sicilian food, and I have to tell him, I'm, I'm, ge- I'm getting some fresh fennel fronds coming up. There's already like four inches of fennel growing in my garden. By the way, it's called wild fennel because it just volunteers wherever it wants to. And I planted the, this fennel years and years ago, and it's still, every spring it starts to come up. I, and it'll continue to come up until the, the building's gardener comes and pulls it out, because he doesn't even know what it is. But he should, of course. So uh, 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 that's what I would do. And you put the salt, pepper, some torn up uh, mint leaves on top of your halved baby artichokes. And usually, you know, I've had the artichokes are coming right out of the water. So they already have some moisture. Uh, But I would add, let's say it depends on the size pan you have, a few tablespoons of, of water. Cover the pan. Put it over a low heat on my stove. It's actually the lowest heat. And after about five minutes, do check because you don't want the water to cook out right away. And you want the water to be barely, barely simmering. You're really doing this in as little water as possible. And then cover it again. And it usually takes altogether 15 to 20 minutes uh, for the artichokes to become thoroughly tender. Uh, the garlic should stay white. It should never color. You should never uh, be out of totally out of liquid in the pan. But at the very end, you want just oil. And, I, you know, one of the ways I know that the artichokes um, are done is I listen. Because if there's water in the pan, no sound will come out of it. But as soon as the water evaporates, the oil will start spinning and that's when usually the artichokes are done. I, 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 I put, you know, I re-season them with salt and pepper before I see, serve them, which gives me an opportunity to taste one <laughs> or two. <laughs> so actually, I, I, I rarely make just a pound of these. I, uh, I, I, it's, you know, you might as well make as much. They are delicious at room temperature. You can put them in the refrigerator for several days. Um, and they're wonderful. We'll just you know open a can of tuna fish, and you have your own uh, Sicilian-style baby artichokes. It's a great, and a, maybe a cut-up tomato, and you're you're in, in 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 business. Here's something that I can't do that I love: um, charcoal roasted artichokes. Now, at this time of the year, this week even, I have to call Italy later and find out if this is true, <laughs> that the artichokes are already being harvested around the Amalfi Coast in Naples and down by Cecilia, in Pesta, which is only a half hour away. But I discovered this charcoal roasted artichokes from going to Gragnano, which is the pasta producing town um, on the Sorrento Peninsula and also other places around there where you get off the autostrada and there's going to be a man roasting artichokes. And I remember, if you ever go uh, uh, archaeological site hunting around there, um, uh, almost every 
out of Strata exit has a guy or a, or in, within a half a kilometer uh, a stand of a man roasting artichokes at the side of the road. And you could do this. I can't do this, but you could, you nestle your artichokes uh, already, you know, the, you don't have to do much prep. You want actually the leaves, the outside tough leaves, to protect the inner leaves. You drizzle them with some oil. Uh, you could stuff some garlic between the leaves. Um, this you do before you put them on the flame, of course. And parsley or mint, either one. And then you put them in the white coals, and you cook them until the outside gets really, it's going to get charred. It's oily and messy. And at the roadside stands, they just hand you a piece of paper. Um, it must be traditional because I've never gotten anything else. <laughs> a piece of white paper. Um, and, and, and it may be a paper napkin if it's a fancy stand. <laughs> and you eat it out of hand. Um, as I said, very messy and very delicious and sort of hedonistic, uh, sticking your face into a charcoal roasted artichoke. There's so, I must say, there are so many ways to cook artichokes. I, I don't want to enumerate them all today. Um, and I have discovered YouTube videos. And, I, and if you're intimidated by an artichoke, which you could be, um, go watch some YouTube videos. People are using YouTube videos to build houses these days. You can learn how to uh, uh, do an artichoke. And as I said, Jacques Pepin, who is the master of technique, um, shows you, and actually, he's such a good teacher. It's not that he's just showing you. He really describes well what he's doing and how he's doing it, even when he's just rotating, an, uh, rotating the base of an artichoke in his hand, turning an artichoke. You cook artichokes? No. No, I'm... I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm uh, I'm one of those people that's scared of our jokes. <laughs> exactly. It is a scary proposition. Yeah. So people resort, I mean, let me say, there are some excellent brands of marinated artichokes that you can buy in the supermarket. And I do buy, uh, I buy a brand, um, Marinella, which is roasted artichokes on the stem with a little of that charcoal flavor that I love on an artichoke. Speaking of which, I, I, this party that I went to the other day for my cousin Erica Marcus, who is the um, food writer for Newsday, um, she gave herself a birthday party at Osteria Umbra in Smithtown. Now, one of our friends who lives in Great Barrington <laughs> was at the party, and I said, oh, Marjorie, how did you get here from Great Barrington? And she went a really interesting way. She drove down to Bridgeport and took the ferry. There you go. And, there you go. It only took her three hours, or three hours a little bit, from Great Barrington all the way to Smithtown, Long Island. I thought that was amazing. That is anyway, amazing. They, this restaurant specializes in charcoal grilled food. They have these huge, huge grills and spits. We have baby pig, you know, myalina, a suckling pig. And one of the things was, I only, as I told my cousin, I only wish I could have eaten more charcoal grilled artichokes. So that's, they, you know, all the work is in the kitchen. There's no work at all to grill them. You could do the, I, I, after I saw the, what this guy did, uh, he halved them um, and then put them on his grill. So I'm sure there was oil and garlic around. And you could do that the same if you have an outdoor grill. I think it's a little too chilly to pull out the grill. But very soon it'll be spring in Sharon also. I just never understood how you ate them. How you what? How you eat artichokes. It just it, it seems like it's well, such a... Well, you know, I mean, if they're all prepped, yeah. you just take a knife and fork and, 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 and cut and eat. But if, if it's a whole artichoke... By the way, nutritionally speaking, artichokes have practically no calories. Like a, a big globe artichoke, I think is 60 or 80 calories, the whole thing. Extremely high in fiber, but the, the, the big nutritional boost is actually from the leaf, from the, what I call leaves now, but they're petals, at the base. And that was the way we were all taught to eat artichokes. And, you know, you've got a steamed artichoke, which, by the way, an easy way to cook an artichoke. 
um, just steam it or boil it. And then as you ate it, you picked off the leaves. It was totally tender at this point, but the leaves are very fibrous. So you pull off the pulp from the, the base of the leaf petal uh, with your teeth as you ate it. And, of course, we dunked this into butter. And it was, I think, when I was young, it was probably more about the butter than about the artichoke. But you, you kept working your way around the artichoke, picking off the leaves, dipping them in butter, and then finally you get to the base, which is totally edible. If it was in a restaurant, certainly they had removed the hairy choke. So when you finally get to and then you take your knife and fork, and it's deli- and I think it's just sensationally delicious. Of course, the French love artichokes too, and they have a lot. I mean, you can find this online. I know because I looked at it. Uh, the, the 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 way I would make artichokes French style is barigoul, which is a Provence a Provencal preparation, basically braised artichokes. But you know, the French have to complicate things. They can't do it as simple as. Italians, which is garlic, an herb, and oil. They have other vegetables braised with the artichokes and other herbs. And after the artichokes are all tender and nice with the other vegetables, they cook down, and wine, of course, and they cook down the liquid into a glaze. And then they serve these artichokes with um, a chopped garlic and parsley could be mint raw i love these but i'm not making them if ever i see them in a restaurant and they're doing them the classic way i would I, and i and i trusted the restaurant I trust too many restaurants these days i went to a i did finally after two years more than two years no about two years i went to a restaurant the other night a real restaurant not 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 one of my not not my Thai restaurant around the corner, which, by the way, closed after I went to it last time. Anyway, I went to this restaurant, and it was the food was wonderful, as I remembered it to be, but it was such an unpleasant experience um, that I'm not going back there again, as good as the food was. I, I just, you know, the restaurant experience now it doesn't do to me what it used to. Why was it unpleasant? Music. Okay. Let's say it's that for at least an hour and a half of this a visit to the restaurant, which lasts about two hours, two and a half hours. Um, there was rock and roll. It was so loud we couldn't talk to each other, even the three of us at a small table. Um, the waiters were so rushed, probably because they were understaffed, but it was hard to get anybody's attention to get anything. And then when a waiter did show up, he was in and out in a second. Um, and I don't know. It just and it was noisy because everybody had to yell because the music was so loud. And because here's one. Because, now this is a thing in Brooklyn. Uh, I'm not so sure so much in Manhattan. Probably in Queens also. But we have a lot of restaurants in, in my area, and a lot of them, if not all of them, have street-side seating now. You know, these plastic-lined booths uh, I don't see the charm. Um, if it's really warm weather, I could see eating outside. But to prevent COVID infection, I'm not sure that sitting in a, a totally enclosed booth outside makes any difference. I'd rather be inside. But anyway, um, because they have so many tables outside now, they leave the front door of the rest. They left the front door of the restaurant open so the waiters could rush in and out. Of course, not having to bump into the door or having to bother to open the door, carrying food outside. So as a result, I had the the wind whipping at my back um, most of the time for dinner. I had to keep I had to keep asking when you could get a waiter's attention. Could you please close the front door? <laughs> I don't know. I'm I'm now used to uh, I'm now used to inviting people home. For <laughs> for meals, <laughs> we have a very nice apartment. <laughs> I I don't mind cooking. I have a woman upstairs if I don't want to cook. Uh, Joanne will cook for me. Um, and you know, it's just so much nicer to eat at home. And we we recently invited a friend, a new friend, um, uh, 
much older woman, I have to say, because she has habits, and I she likes to go out, and I invited her to have lunch at home, and I must say she thought of every excuse not to come, huh. and instead to suggest we go to this place or that place. So I guess it's your taste, too. Yeah. I mean, after 35 years of being a restaurant critic, I, I, I said I'm never again. You know, I don't want, I'm not never again, but I don't really crave restaurants anymore. But now, after two years of staying home, I you know, wouldn't mind going to a gracious meal. Yeah. All right. All right, Arthur. I learned more about right. artichokes. It don't exist. It, uh, I, it doesn't exist anymore. You know, I don't. I don't know where you go for a gracious meal anymore. That's it. It's, it's well. It's getting used to going back in, and again, that really is what it is. <sighs> well, as I said, the food was very good. <laughs> All right. That's one plus. At least. All right. All right. Everybody Arthur. have. A, by the way, it, according to our uh, astrologer Jill Goodman, it's a it's a it's a sort of tumultuous week. <laughs> so everybody, stay calm. <laughs> All right, Arthur, I'll speak to you next week. Bye. Arthur Schwartz, the food maven, uh, here on Robin Hood Radio. You can find Arthur also on our website, robinhoodradio.com. Just look for Arthur Schwartz, the food maven. Underwriting support for Arthur Schwartz, the food maven, Hillsdale Home Chef. More information, 518-325-7000, hgshomechef.com.